Good evening. Welcome back to our midweek evening devotion. Uh, we are now doing this just on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. It's going to be our new regular time. I was here last week on Wednesday, but I did it a little bit earlier than usual, so we'll all start adjusting back to a regular schedule again, hopefully. So you've got one person with me. We're going to hang tight for a couple minutes here and see who else joins us. Um, I know I've been kind of bad about telling people what's going on, so hopefully folks know to tune in. Hi, Barbara. It's good to see you here with us. I've definitely missed uh, interacting with the regulars here on Facebook. I've got some scripture picked out for us tonight. Uh, we are going to read from the gospel tonight of Matthew. Uh, it'll be chapter 23, verses 27 through 39. And I realized um, I'm going to be reading just off of the Presbyterian Mission uh, website. They have the daily lectionary on that website. Um, if you just go to presbyterianmission.org slash devotion slash daily, um, you can find those or you can just Google daily lectionary PCUSA. Um, but I don't know what version, what uh, translation they use. So um, it's probably NRSV, I would imagine. That's typically what Presbyterians like to use. Um, but I didn't double check it. So if you want to follow along, again, that's Matthew 23, verses 27 through 39, and hopefully it'll be close to whatever you've got with you. All right, let's go ahead and read. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside look beautiful, but inside they are full of bones of the dead and of all kinds of filth. So you also on the outside look righteous to others, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous. And you say, if we had lived in the days of our ancestors, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. Thus you testify against yourselves that you are descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your ancestors, you snakes, you brood of vipers, how can you escape being sentenced to hell? Therefore I send you prophets, sages, and scribes, some of whom you will kill and crucify, and some you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town, so that upon you may come all the righteous bloodshed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the sanctuary and the altar. Truly, I tell you, all this will come upon this generation. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So this scripture tonight is a fun one. Um, it's a little harsher than what we often read during these evening devotion sessions. Um, but I think it's still important because uh, it calls out the hypocrisy that all of us face in our own lives. I read something recently online about, um, I think what they were calling it was the Disney princess syndrome when you read the Bible. And that's our tendency to read the Bible through a framework where we see ourselves as the heroes or the good guy. Um, we don't often read a piece of scripture like this, talking about the scribes and the Pharisees, people that Jesus describes as hypocrites and see ourselves as those people. But I think that it's important sometimes to ask ourselves, um, when have we been 
the scribes and the Pharisees in our own lives? Uh, when have we not lived out the values that Jesus asks us to? So, you know, this isn't me trying to tell anybody on here tonight that you're a brood of vipers and, you know, um, are doing bad things. I don't know what any of you is doing in your personal life right now, but um, I find it helpful to remember that oftentimes I'm not the Disney princess. I'm not the hero at the center of the story. I'm one of the people probably who's causing some issues on the sidelines um, and I need to question my own behavior sometimes. So I like this passage for that reason. Um, I hope that it gives everybody something to think about. Um, I think that's all that I wanted to say about that one. I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling this week a little bit discombobulated. I don't know, I guess I had a weird weekend where I, I went to Austin and then I came back to Quero and then I had to go back for a doctor's appointment on Monday and then I came back again yesterday and so I've just been back and forth and back and forth and my schedule is all off. So sorry if I'm a little out of whack tonight, um, but I'm happy to kind of get back to a normal schedule um, and be back with you guys here weekly. We um, sadly got some news this morning in our church that one of our longtime members passed early this morning, Dorothy Jean. Um, she had been in hospice care for a little while now, and so we knew that her time was coming, um, and we were happy to hear that uh, she went peacefully at around 2 a.m. this morning. Um, so we're glad that she's not in pain anymore, and we celebrate that she is uh, with our Lord in heaven. Um, but I did want to share that information with any of you who might have known her, have been thinking about her, praying for her. Um, we'll continue to pray for her family and everybody who loved her. I know that lots of people loved her. I see that Barbara says that her family needs prayer, so we will certainly lift you up tonight, Barbara, and don't feel like you have to share the details here on Facebook, but you can always contact me privately and do that if you would like to. Um, but God knows your concerns, so we will pray for you too. Uh, if anybody else has anything that they would like for us to pray for, feel free to let us know, um, or just, you know, we always take a few moments to silently lift up our requests, so you can always do that then. Okay, um, I don't think that I have any other news for you guys right now, uh, except that Bill is on vacation for the next two weeks, so um, I will be recording online worship by myself and then uh, providing worship materials for Sunday morning uh, that we've got some lectors lined up to read. So if you plan to come to worship, you'll be getting sermons from me the next two weeks. Um, and we want to pray for Bill's rest and relaxation as he takes a little bit of time off. He deserves that. So, all right, all that being said, let us now go to God in prayer. Creator God, we thank you for the continuity of this community. We've been dealing with this pandemic for months now and things haven't gotten any better for us and that's frustrating some days. But we're grateful for the people that you've placed in our lives to help us continue the journey, even when it's not fun. Lord, we thank you for pieces of scripture that challenge us to consider what our role is in our own personal narratives. We thank you for the opportunity to ask ourselves if we're really the hero or if maybe we're a little bit hypocritical sometimes. And we thank you for making us human so that we have the ability to grow and change and learn over the course of our lifetimes. Lord, we pray for those who are sick. We pray for souls who have passed, that they are being re reunited with you right now in eternal life. 
that you would send comfort and peace to their families. God, we pray for Barbara's family and whatever struggles they're dealing with right now. And we all have people on our hearts and minds who need your care and attention. And we lift them up to you now in the silence of our hearts. Holy God, no matter what challenges we're facing or how burdened we are, we know that you're with us, that you love us and care for us and you want the best for us. Help us to follow the teachings of your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining me tonight. Um, hopefully, as I keep doing this over the next several weeks, uh, people will either remember that it's happening or catch on that I've, you know, changed to just once a week and haven't given up on them. Um, but it's good to see several of you here. Um, all names that I recognize, and uh, I'm seeing there's an option now um, to bring people on camera with me. So I'm not going to do any of that right now. I won't do that to anybody without asking you ahead of time, but maybe we can get fancy one of these nights, and uh, if somebody wants to join me live and <laughs> do a reading or something, we can collaborate on that. Oh my gosh, I just had a bug try to get behind my glasses. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so yeah, we can, we can get creative with our evening devotions too. So let me know if you want to do any of that. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful evening and a good rest of the week. And we will see you back online at 1030 Sunday morning or in the church pavilion at nine o'clock Sunday morning. I will talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.